Call of Duty today is quite a bit of a joke. They got Nicki Minaj skins, they got Snoop Dogg in there, they got, who's, who's the latest? Uh, weed guy? I don't think I have to tell you that. The general opinion seems to be very consistent across the board that Call of Duty ain't what it used to be. But what it used to be, whew. Oh, take me back. It's pretty common knowledge that about COD 4 Modern Warfare to about Black Ops 2 or 3-ish, these ranges of games are pretty much Call of Duty's golden age, or what most people consider to be the prime of Call of the Duty. Modern Warfare was the game that established Call of Duty as the yearly series. Then you got Modern Warfare 2. Everybody knows Modern Warfare 2, even if you don't play Call of Duty. This game was on the news. This game made you shoot up an airport, which is still a little... what. Why did they make us shoot up an airport? This game was the place where you got called words that you didn't even know existed yet. You fucking tata! Huh. This Call of Duty role would continue for the next couple years, with the next game Call of Duty Black Ops, and then, in 2011, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. This is where I'm gonna stop my Call of Duty history lesson. Why this one? Why am I singling out this one? Because during this one, Activision put on the first ever Call of Duty convention. Kind of. And nobody really seems to talk about it. Call of Duty XP was an event in 2011 held about a couple months before the release of Modern Warfare 3. For two days, you could go to an abandoned airplane hangar and experience all kinds of Call of Duty activities. Maybe this is a lot less of a big deal than I seem to think it is. But this was when I was in prime time Call of Duty mode. I was that Call of Duty flat brim hat Dorito eating kid. So I was in hype mode for Modern Warfare 3. I was excited. I pre I ordered it, I got the shitty little dog tag they give you. I have it somewhere. I don't know where it is. I was excited to kill more people at the ripe young age of 12. Actually, 2011? I was 10. Hmm. So when I heard there was this big event going on in LA with sumo wrestling and zip lines and you could play the game early and they had jeeps also, I wanted to go there very, very badly. But I was 10 years old, so I didn't get to. I also could not go to it because it was 18 plus. That's kind of a bad move on Activision's part. That's like 70% of the Call of Duty fan base at that point. Today I'll be taking a look at the convention that I wanted to go to so badly almost exactly 12 years ago. But before we get into things, I need to thank today's sponsor. I know someone wanted to sponsor me. Can you believe it? I I can't. Today's sponsor is... Surfshark VPN. The onion will make sense in a second. Surfshark is a program and a browser extension that lets you do a variety of things, like location spoofing. I was in the United States recently and wanted to watch Futurama, which is usually on the Canadian Disney Plus, but to my dismay, is not on the American one. With Surfshark, I could have just went bop, 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 and switch my location back to Canada and been back to my favorite little show. It doesn't just have to be Canada either, it can be any country. They also have a built-in ad blocker and a cookie pop-up blocker. I'm sure you've seen these shits around, do you accept cookies, please accept cookies. Surfshark gets rid of these in a very humane and painless way. Surfshark also runs on as many phones and computers as you want. There is no limit. I have Surfshark running on 96 phones. Every day I add one more and get a little bit stronger. So what does any of this have to do with the onion? Well, you can use code BIGONION for four months free of Surfshark. Big Onion! They just let me use Big Onion as the code. I didn't even have to push or prod or anything. I just said, can we use Big Onion? And they said, yes, you can use Big Onion. So if you want to give Surfshark a go, use code Big Onion at the checkout for four months for free. Thank you so much again to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Okay, back to Call of Duty. So how did you get to COD XP? The tickets to COD XP were 150 US dollars each, which isn't really that bad for two days of things. Plus, if you went to Call of Duty XP, you got the hardened edition of Modern Warfare 3 for free, which costs $150. So if you were already going to buy the hardened edition, you just got a free entrance into COD XP. That's actually really, really good. That's uncharacteristically good for Activision. This is 2011 Activision, I guess, though. So, what was there to do at COD XP? What kind of festivities and fun times awaited you if you were to attend this abandoned metal shack? Oh my god, it's a Google office now. Oh my god. Well, I'm so glad you asked. 
at the event itself in the main space, they had a bunch of consoles set up where you could try out Modern Warfare 3 for yourself. Then over to the right, there was the main stage. Here they held a bunch of different things. First of which was the multiplayer reveal, which may not seem like a big deal. It's, it's multiplayer, who cares? But this was like the shit back in this Call of Duty era. So to see that trailer live before anybody else, this was pretty cool. But they also had panels. They had a zombies panel, a voice actor panel. That's pretty cool. They had a developer panel with a Q&A. Woody's gamer tag was there. And oh, is that Jeff Keighley? He's j I swear, he's just everywhere. I actually didn't know that he was there. That, that jump scared me. When the stage wasn't being used for presentations or panels, it was being used for a $1 million Modern Warfare 3 tournament with all the best Call of Duty teams, this big trophy, and... Also, I Justine, which is kind of weird because, like I said, Modern Warfare 3 wasn't out at this point. It was two months out still. This is a $1 million tournament for a game that you can't practice for. They had a sumo place where you could dress up in, like, big juggernaut gear and hurl yourself at your friend. That looked really, really fun. That's actually a really cool idea. I really like that. I would have done that if I wasn't 10. They also had a Call of Duty armory that had guns from all kinds of Call of Duty games, and you might think that's not that cool. Those are just normal guns. I thought this too, but they have everything laid out in sections for each Call of Duty game through the years. They got World at War, Modern Warfare, Black Ops, here's the Intervention, here's Akimbo 1887s, you could meet Soap, Ghost, and Roach, and here is probably the coolest part. They had a replica of the Wave Gun from Zombies, along with the very disgusting man. And all of this so far is just the inside. The real treasures, the real experience waited for you outside of the hangar. What could you do outside of the hangar, Infinity Ward creative director Robert Bowling? Hey, I'm Robert Bowling from Infinity Ward, and we are here at Call of Duty XP in Los Angeles. Let's go outside and check it out. On the way over to the pit, I just had to stop and show you guys Burger Town fully recreated. Except it's not. Burger Town pisses me the fuck off. If you don't know, Burger Town is the Call of Duty version of Burger King that exists in every single Call of Duty, or most of them. So it's pretty iconic. It's probably one of the most iconic things about Call of Duty. So to recreate it in real life, Sounds like an amazing idea, right? Ron! Burger Town. The food is just normal ass food, which like, I don't know what I expected. It is, they, like, they would sell burgers and fries and things at Burger Town. I just want like a Burger Town wrapper or drink cup or something. This is just a Costco barbecue, not unlike one you have had with your family, except in a big metal shack with a Burger Town logo stapled to it. I mean, it's kind of cool. The outside's kind of cool, I guess. I guess. I don't know why I care so much. I wasn't even there. I just thought it would be cooler. Anyways, moving on. Outside, there was lots and lots of very fun things to do. They had a zip line. I, that's not really that Call of duty -y, but it looks fun. You get to go over the entire outside area. The zip line was kind of weird. At the top, when you were about to go, they made you say, Call of Duty, before you jumped off. That's not real, I made that up. It was just a normal zip line. I couldn't find any footage of it, but they also had another consumable station called the Dew Bunker with Mountain Dew to drink. Yeah, Mountain Dew on me. Oh, I'm sorry. Where are my manners? Would you like some? Oh my god. The next activities that you could do are probably some of my favorites. Over beside the zipline, there was two gun-type things. First was the pit from Modern Warfare 2. If you don't know, Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 1 both have this kind of, like, timed mode. What do you call it? Fuck, what do you- what's it called? When you like- you, you have to do a little thing in a certain amount of time. I'll be, it's called this. I can't remember it right now. But it's a little thing that you run around, you shoot the targets, you try and get the best time. This is my best time. So they recreated this little timed segment mode in real life, except with paintball guns. That's really, really cool. But not even the coolest thing you could do here. You could also very, very appropriately play paintball at COD XP. But the place that you played it was on the Modern Warfare 2 map, Scrapyard. They completely completely remade Scrapyard to play paintball in in real life. That is so fucking cool. Oh my god. That is such a cool, cool fucking thing. <clears throat> the next activity is the Jeep rides, which sounds super, super lame on the surface. I don't know why they called it that. I don't, I don't know if it was actually called Jeep rides. Wait, hold on. It was called Jeep Op Ex Jeep Ops Experience. This was a really, really cool thing. It's not just a Jeep ride. You you do ride in a Jeep, but they take you through a bunch of locations and it's pretty much just a live role play of a Modern Warfare mission. They have guys with guns and they shoot you and they have civilians. I really love the civilians. Like what was the job posting for this? Call of Duty XP, we're looking for fish holders. Then there's a part where you even get out of the Jeep and you go grab some intel or something. You get tossed around by a couple Bravo 6 guys and get back in the Jeep. 
and it's like you're doing a real Modern Warfare mission. It looked really, really fun. This is not the only time Modern Warfare 3 would collaborate with the Jeep company, though. For some reason, for Modern Warfare 3 and for Black Ops 2, Activision partnered with Jeep to make Call of Duty Jeeps. Look, they got Modern Warfare 3 on the seats, Modern Warfare 3 on the dash. They got Call of Duty Elite on, on the tire thing. Now these, wow, I just got really white. Now these Jeeps were very exclusive, obviously. Not a lot of people want Call of Duty Jeeps. There was only 3,500 of them ever made. You'd probably think that getting your hands on one of these or getting to see I need to pee. So you'd probably think they're pretty far and few between. Pretty hard to come by. Pretty hard to see, right? You'd probably- you are probably saying. Oh, but you'd be so wrong. Coincidentally, as I was planning on making this video, I was driving, and I looked behind me, and I said, Oh wow, there's a Jeep. Wouldn't it have- lol, wouldn't it be funny if that was a Call of Duty Jeep? Would you fucking believe it? It was the fucking Call of Duty Jeep. In my little Canadian city, for some reason. And I talked to him. I talked to the guy who owned this Call of Duty Jeep, and asked him how, do, how he got this, where did he get it? And he didn't even really know Call of Duty. He just said he got it from a dealership in a bigger city near me. And he was really nice. I looked like such a dweeb. I was taking these videos of myself with it, but here I am with a Call of Duty Jeep. That was a good day. But enough about Jeeps. Let's get back on track now. Back to Call of Duty XP. That is about all of the activities you could do outside, except for maybe stand in line. That was looks to be quite a lot of the experience too, as things like this go. If you put a lot of people in a place where you can do stuff, there's gonna be big lines. The final thing, and probably, in my opinion, the most insane, the last and final closings of COD XP were the evenings. You could do all of these activities that I mentioned from 12 p.m. all the way till 7.30, but the venue did not close at 7.30. There was one more event at 8 p.m. on each of the two nights. There was a performance at 8 by the Dropkick Murphys. I don't know who they are. My friends told me to look at this song though, and they said I'd know it. Ah, I do. Hey, I'm Justine here with Scruffy from Dropkick Murphy's. I heard there's so... a sentry gun with that roams around, oh, which is pretty, crazy. pretty cool, you know. But you could see them at eight on the Friday, but on the Saturday, the final day of Call of Duty XP, to kick off the final two months of hype to Modern Warfare 3. Do you know who closed out Call of Duty XP? Kanye West. They got Kanye West at Call of Duty XP. That's why the Burger Town is so shit. They gave all the money to Kanye West. And that was Call of Duty XP 2011. All in all, it looked really, really cool. I really wanted to go there so bad when I was a kid. In all of the marketing and things, they kind of make it seem like this is the first of many Call of Duty XPs that were going to happen. Welcome to the first Call of Duty XP. But there were not many. There was one more in 2016 that I'm not going to talk about in too much detail, because by this point I was kind of moved on from Call of Duty and I didn't really care. But they did have Nuketown Paintball. That looked really cool. That looks really fucking cool. Fuck. Fuck I want to go to Nuketown Paintball. They also had Zombies Laser Tag. They had some PSVR thing there. They had Wiz Khalifa and Snoop Dogg this time. All in all, it looked pretty similar to 2011, but with a few less things. Like there was no Burger Town and there was no Jeeps. Very sad. This 2016 one, good or bad though, was the last time that Call of Duty XP ever happened. And to my knowledge, the last time there was ever a real life Call of Duty event of any kind. Which is kind of sad. Call of Duty kind of does suck a lot now, I think at least. I don't really play Call of Duty anymore. But for what it was worth, this was a really cool event. I wish that more companies would do things like this, because this, it's cool. Seeing things from your favorite game remade in real life is really, really cool. Even if it is just a metal shack with a logo stapled to it. But what about you. Were you around back in the Call of Duty Golden Age? Were you like me and you really wanted to go to it, but you were also 10? Or were you one of the lucky few that got to actually go to it? Whatever your experience may be, let me know about it in the comments. I would love to hear about it. Thank you so much for watching. Activision, if you do another Call of Duty XP, please invite me. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you upon the next one. <sighs>